Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the kingdom of Babylon concealing the worship of death in the temple of God. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of State and Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit, and of the will and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed and purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration Okay, guys, I've got some fundamental truths today, guys, that everybody needs to get a grasp on. Um, if they can receive this as truth, this is, this is, these are truths that people need to lay to their heart and to build up their, their, their knowledge in the Word of God and, uh, and their faith in God's goodness and presence, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and thereby, thereby strengthening, strengthening their armor against the tax of the devil, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. So guys, have we, as we've been discussing, the seal of Satan is death's permanent residence within the constitution of man that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image to the beast. Excuse me. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. So here we have the seal of Satan as death's permanent residence within the constitution of man. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And this is made manifest by way of the ministry of the image to the beast that appears in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 through 15 for such a false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore and we know that an angel is a messenger and the light is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So the seal of Satan is death's permanent residence within the constitution of man that appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, as made manifest by way of the ministry of the image to the beast. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. As the image to the beast labors to incorporate Satan's seal in predestination into civil and ecclesiastical powers. Okay, this appears in Revelation 13, 15 through 17. This union of civil and ecclesiastical power appears in, in not only the seal of Satan in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, but it appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, where we have the union of the beast and the harlot. And of course, in, in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, we have the corporeal appearing of the image of the beast as it obtains civil power to, to enforce uh, the worship of itself as it maintains the, the seal of Satan in predestination and enforce the worship of itself as the image to the beast on pain of death. And then we have it causing what appears to be in verse 16 and 17 of Revelation 13, what appears to me to be a religious tax that imposes the mark of the beast upon all flesh. 
So the image of the beast labors to incorporate Satan's seal in predestination into civil and ecclesiastical powers that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, as it solicits the worship of death, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, and the third angel followed, followed me, saying with a loud voice, and no, excuse me, I don't know why I'm having trouble repeating scriptures that I read every single day today. So that's really, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire brimstone in the presence of holy angels, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. So we've been also been discussing in previous lessons how the dragon that appears as Satan, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 12, names the dragon as Satan. The dragon Dragon gives gives uh, 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 life unto the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 4, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the, beast, unto the beast, who is able to make war with him. And then, of course, the beast summons his image. And the declaration is declared in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10. If any man worship the beast and his image, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God. So we have the 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 uh, spiritual lineage of uh, pathology for the spirit of Antichrist it originates with the dragon. Uh, the dragon gives this power unto the beast, and the beast summons his image. So, the image of the beast labors to incorporate Satan's seal in predestination into civil and ecclesiastical powers, Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, as it solicits the worship of death, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, by pouring out the spirit of Antichrist upon all flesh. Romans chapter 3, verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of ass is under their lips. And 1 John 2, 15 through 18, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, is the last time, as you heard, the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Then 1 Timothy 6, 10, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they had erred from the face and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And we know that, that money in, in and of itself is not evil. It's when people place the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, the pride of life, which money can enhance in people's life, these, these three different manifestations of lust, then when people place the, the love of money above the glory of God, then it, it, it is manifestly declared the root of all evil because it, it can. It can obtain the lust. It can control and uh, uh, it can advance people in their lusts of their flesh and the lusts of the eyes and in their pride of life. So it is depicted, the love of money over the glory of God is depicted as the root of all evil because it can, it can obtain and enhance um, um, the spirit, the three manifestations of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life that appear in 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 through 18. And we know 1 John 2 15 through 18 is the, the, the most fundamental and, and, uh, the most fundamental and deepest roots of the manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist as it resides within the heart of man. So, let's go over this again. The seal of Satan is death's permanent residence within the constitution of man, appearing in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, as made manifest by way of the ministry, the ministry of the image of the beast, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. Okay, the beast is, as we know, the Antichrist is does appear as the beast. It's specifically named so in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, after the seal of Satan is made manifest by the ministry of the image of the beast within our world. And so the 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 corporeal body uh, and the mediator between all flesh, the minister and the administrator and the the church of Satan that that mediates between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist to cultivate the residence of death within the inhabitation of man is the image to the beast. And that's why it's called the image to the beast. Just as Jesus Christ was the image of God for all the saints of righteousness, the image to the beast is the corporeal body of death that that 
that administrates and pours out the spirit of Antichrist upon all flesh and cultivates the worship of death to captivate all flesh with the mark of the beast in our world. So, the seal of Satan is death's permanent residence within the constitution of man, appearing in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Okay, this is this is absolutely the most basic fundamental truth of Revelation 13, 15 through 17 that I can I can possibly um um that I can possibly be cognizant of in my thinking, as made manifest by way of the ministry of the image to the beast that appears in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, as the image of the beast labors to incorporate Satan's seal in predestination into civil and ecclesiastical powers, Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, as it solicits the worship of death, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, and pours out the spirit of Antichrist upon all flesh, Romans 3, 13, 1 John 2, 15 through 18, 1 Timothy the 6, 6, 10. Darkness, okay? Darkness is satanic power to blind man's cognizance of his presence within their environment. Let me say that again. Darkness is satanic power to blind man's cognizance of his presence within their environment. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, and 6 and 7. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, let the light, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Darkness is satanic power to blind man's cognizance of his presence within their environment. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, and 6 and 7. This is the most basic, fundamental uh, uh, fundamental uh, definition of darkness that I can be cognizant of in my thinking. Okay, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. And we have, of course, here in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19, it says, enter not into the path of wicked men, of wicked men, and it admonishes us about the the what I personally believe is the declared ministry of the image to the beast as it references well let's read the passage enter not into the path of wicked men and go not in the way of evil men avoid it pass not by it turn from it and pass away four times five times six, six times it says here and verse Proverbs 4 14 and 15 to not have fellowship with the what I believe is the manifestation of the ministry of the image of the beast. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. This is appears to me to be a direct reference to the 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 the, the, the image of the beast that is drinking in of the golden cup of the spirit of Antichrist, primarily we know now in its desire to fornicate with the world as manifested in the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life. And its ministry is, the basis of its ministry is blasphemy, as it appears as the names of blasphemy with as resident within the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. For they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence, violence, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. This is a manifestation. This verse, verse 18 in Proverbs chapter 4, is God declaring that people will become more and more cognizant of God's goodness and presence within and without, with as in, in their environment, as the glory of God uh, is magnified more and more until the seal of God is made perfect in manifestation, and they are declared now in perfect union, holiness, and no longer cognizant of sin, their sins, and they are now abiding in eternity and union with Holy Father God. Verse 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. 
So guys, darkness is satanic power to blind man's cognizance of his presence within their environment. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Okay, this has got to be a reference to the ministry of the image of the beast as the image of the beast. We know the image of the beast is deliberately promoting and promulgating ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers as the ministry, its ministry of blasphemy is made manifest in, in civil powers. And it's, it's deliberately taking organized crime to ecclesiastical powers in the form of religious tax. Uh, as made manifest by its ministry of blasphemy to ecclesiastical powers. So we know guys that, that, that the, the, the seal of Satan, the mark of the beast is the worship of death incorporated into CV, civil and ecclesiastical power. So Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14 Every plant which my heavenly father, have, heavenly father not, hath not planted shall be rooted up. This rooting up, we know, is a direct reference to the mark of the beast. And it's a rooting up from the, the rooting, being rooted and grounded in the glory of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ, as explicated in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. Every, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. This appears to me to be a direct reference to the ministry of the image of the beast as the image of the beast goes out and attempts to capture all flesh with the seal of Satan residing in the constitution of man to make manifest the mark of the beast. So the image of the beast can satiate its illicit desires and obtain immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin and force all flesh to worship it and serve it on pain of death. So darkness is satanic power to blind man's cognizance of his presence within their environment. And that, that pit or ditch, the, the, I believe that, that that word for pit, the the the, uh, the Greek word that appears here for, for, for ditch that appears in Matthew chapter 13 and 14 also appears as pit. And But I don't believe it's the same word that appears in Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11. And in Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11, we have what I, have, I appears to me to be the tr spiritual transformation of, of the minister of Satan, the image to the beast, as God witnesses the image to the beast transformed spiritually into a child of Satan with the seal of Satan and predestination, making manifest the appearing of their king into their environment. And of course, the manifestation of the appearing of their king within their environment appears in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11 verse 11. It's the passage being Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11, but the appearing of the king occurs in verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So darkness is satanic power to blind man's cognizance of his presence within their environments. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. The kingdom of Babylon is Satan's ministry anointed and transformed within the image of to the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 through 14. We have the beast summon his image. We have the beast com uh, commission the image to deceive the entire world and anoint the image with the spirit of Antichrist to perform miracles, which I believe is the transformation of the glory of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ for the worship of death and as it labors to seat 
itself within the congregations of man that appears in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. So the kingdom of Babylon is Satan's ministry, anointed and transformed within the image to the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 14, that enforces the will of the king upon all flesh. Revelation chapter 17, verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. This is actually, this is the, the, this is, we have here the declaration and the judgment by Holy Father God as the transformation of the image to the beast into a child of Satan as manifested by the beast as his transformation is made perfect and he receives the seal of Satan in predestination and he becomes operational and attempts to labor to manifest the seal of Satan within the constitution of man. Revelation chapter 17 verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Okay? So, the kingdom of Babylon is Satan's ministry anointed and transfer, transformed within the image to the beast. Two, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 14, that enforces the will of the king upon all flesh. Revelation chapter 17, verse 17, and 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26, effectively concealing his presence in the temple of God. 1, Tim, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Let me read that again. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. And we understand this falling away, this falling away of Babylon that's declared by the second angel in Revelation chapter 14. This falling away is declared by the, the angel in Revelation 14, 8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine and wrath of her fornication. It's also declared in Revelation chapter 18, Verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This falling away that Paul is depicting here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, is the end of Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary that today is imputing mercy and grace upon all flesh. It's the falling away of mercy and grace from all those that are receiving and will receive the mark of the beast. And that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of lawlessness. Okay, so this is what's being depicted here as uh, the, the fall of Babylon. That's exactly what Paul is depicting when he says that day shall not come except they're coming falling away first. He's, he's depicting that day will not come unless until the kingdom of Babylon and the seal of Satan making manifest the mark of the beast is imputed upon all flesh within our world. This man of lawlessness and the man of lawlessness appears as the beast in the temple of God. Let's read this again. The kingdom of Babylon is Satan's ministry 
anointed and transformed within the image to the beast, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 14, that enforces the will of the king upon all flesh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 17, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26, effectively concealing his presence in the temple of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. So guys, this is the simplest definition that I can give to the kingdom of Babylon. And the ministry of the image to the beast is there to bring darkness upon the entire world, concealing cognizance of death's presence, the presence of Satan within man's environment. Natural man is, is, can, be, can be cognizant of death within his environment. And we know this accelerates up until the second advent of Jesus Christ as men willfully exchange their soul by way of the ministry of the image to the beast and begin to worship and incorporate the worship of death within their constitution. God's judgments allow death to make itself manifest within man's environment to awaken men to the darkness that resides within their souls and to attempt that in an attempt to enlighten men to their need for salvation and their need to cultivate the fruits of righteousness and magnify the glory of God to escape the pit of destruction. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 and 6 and 7. So the kingdom of Babylon is Satan's ministry, anointed and transformed within the image to the beast that enforces the will of the king upon all flesh, effectively concealing his presence in the temple of God. Okay? 2 Thessalonians, two, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Public executions without any pretense of righteousness, righteous judgment, or justice are the fulfillment of of the ministry or administration of the image to the beast. This is, appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. Let me state that again. Public executions without any pretense of righteous judgment or just, justice are the fulfillment of the ministry or administration of the image to the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, and this is repeated again in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10. Therefore, and this is actually Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, this fulfillment of the ministry of the image to the, the administration of the worship of death that is being poured out by the image to the beast, we see the fulfillment of this ministry as the mark of the beast, the seal of Satan, resides in the constitution of man, and the mark of the beast is made manifest in full within these people that appear, the souls that are declaring their captivity to Satan as children of Satan with the mark of the beast in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10. Let's read the passage. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for, for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Public executions without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice are the fulfillment of the ministry or administration of the image to the beast. Revelation 13, 15, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10. Thus, we see the worship of death and permanent occupation seated and sealed in the constitution of all flesh. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 9, the souls of mankind inhabited with the mark of the beast, Psalm chapter 49, verse 20 and 19. Man that abideth in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. They shall go to the generations of their fathers. They shall never see light. So this is an amazing passage of scripture. We now, it appears to me that the fulfillment, Isaiah 59 and 9 and 10, 
verse Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, is declaring the fulfillment of the, the ministry of none other than the image to the beast, as the image to the beast successfully captivated people with the mark of the beast, and they are thus, thus declaring that they are no longer cognizant within their souls of the glory of God. Okay? And it's horrible. This is a terrible passage of Scripture. And it appears to me, in the, in the very last verse, they finally are cognizant that they have the mark of the beast. It's, it's manifestly declared. They declare themselves that they are in desolate places as dead men. Their souls are no longer a manifest... Uh, even a, in a passive manifestation, are are manifestly um, receiving of the glory of God within their 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 lives. They are their dead souls residing in suspended animation, and they are now absolutely aware of it. Let's read this passage again. Therefore, is judgment far from us? From us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity for brightness. But we walk in darkness. And they this this is declaring they're not cognizant. That the beast has has is residing in the temple of God, and is manifestly at this point, it appears they're not cognizant that the beast has captivated and taken them prisoners with his mark, and they are not cognizant that that they are they have taken their their final seat in the kingdom of hell, as Revelation chapter seventeen verse one through six depicts the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell arrayed in a graduating scale as manifested by their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. So they, they at this point, they are they're not cognizant of the glory of God in their environment and they are not apparently they're not cognizant that the king has come and their will, the the will of the king is now their will and they are manifestly declaring this by their works and the constitution of the seal of satan as manifested within their souls so Public executions without any pretense of righteousness, judgment, or justice are the fulfillment of the ministry or administration of the image of the beast, Revelation 13, 15, and Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, where they are declaring the fulfillment and their captivity to the image to the beast. They're actually, this captivity is to the image of the beast because the image of the beast is the one that is fulfilling the ministry of the beast to captivate all souls without cognizance of the glory of God and summarily executing people that will not manifestly worship the image to the beast as it labors to satiate its own satanic desire in the fulfillment of horizontal immunity for iniquity, transgression, and sin, as it labors and it and it it labors for this union and to to incorporate the constitution of Satan within civil powers, granting it and which is the worship of death, as manifest by the seal of Satan within its own heart. It labors to it it promotes and promulgates ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers to incorporate the worship of death within the constitution of man, the manifest declaration of its presence and its its own glory above that of the glory of God, as it is resident in dem democracy, democratic process, and constitutional protections. Isaiah 59, 9 and 10. Thus we see the worship of death and permanent occupation seated and sealed in the constitution of all flesh. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 9. And excuse me, guys, I'm having tons of dizziness that I'm not having any other time during the day, but when I I I make these videos, so I'm I'm I I may be 
uh, misquoting scriptures and, and slurring words and so forth. So you guys, I, I encourage you guys to, to, uh, uh, to, to, um, study for yourselves and study the, the verses that I'm giving you for what you believe is true. And, uh, uh, because I, I'm actually, I'm having a lot of Disney, so I'm not having any other time to day, but when I'm preaching this gospel. So I think, I think, um, I'm, I'm having a little bit of special problems out here within my environment, which is obvious, obvious to me. So Romans chapter eight, verse five through eight, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot be please God, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And we know that that God's holiness is uh, uh, um, defined in the Ten Commandments. It's the boundaries of His character, and when we 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 break the law of God, we step out of God's holiness, and this is how we are we are manifestly cognizant of our sins and. Uh, by the even the passive manifestation of the fruits of life residing within our soul, and we and the reason that we suffer death, but the seal of God uh, uh, imputes God's holiness in eternity back upon us. It 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 uh, uh, it imputes. Uh, we know we know that we're no longer cognizant of sin. Uh, of our sins once we receive the seal of God and we are manifestly declared um, children of God residing in eternity and one we are soon to meet the Lord in the air at the second advent of Jesus Christ and reside in the holy city. So thus we see the worship of death and permanent occupation seated and sealed in the constitution of all flesh. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 9. The souls of mankind inhabited by way of the mark of the beast. Psalm chapter 49, verse 20 and 19. So this guys, this is uh this is pretty amazing. This is this is some fundamental truths that, that I think that everybody needs to be aware of and everybody needs to apply to their heart and and incorporate within their knowledge of fundamental Christian doctrine and understanding as we put on our spiritual armor and we resist the the solicitations of the worship of death as as Satan attempts to incorporate us within the kingdom of darkness, imposing his will upon us and manifestly declaring us to be his children with the mark of the beast. And the only way to resist this is by the manifest power of Holy Father God, the glory of God residing within our souls, putting on the armor of God and going to war with the forces of darkness. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 Which states, I, I read this every day, but for some reason I'm having problems. I'm having cognitive problems when I I uh, I make these videos. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. So God, that's what we, I was, guys, excuse me, guys, that's what we do. We labor to magnify the glory of God to magnify cognizance of his goodness and presence within and without in our environment. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and we put on our armor so we can solicit the, uh, we can, excuse me, so we can resist the solicitations of the worship of death as the ministry of the image to the beast labors to captivate all flesh, laboring only to satiate its only own illicit desires and to captivate civil powers to write, to manifest the, the worship of death and the constitution of all flesh so it can obtain horizontal immunity to summarily execute people without any pretense of judgment, justice, or righteousness in democracy, democratic process, and the constitution of the United States as it stands today because it can't. It can't cultivate an illicit harvest without incorporating the worship of death and creating this union of civil and ecclesiastical powers and raising up the worship of death within civil and ecclesiastical powers by the manifest de declaration of its presence within these people's environments that is the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of Babylon blinding people 
to death's residence within the temple of God. Jeffrey Lee, I wonder if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.